Hello, I'm JW. Continuing in the heating series, this time we're going to have a look at frost thermostats and how you connect those to either an existing system or a new one. And we're going to cover that for S plan, Y plan, and also for combination boilers. It's the deal where you don't have a hot water cylinder or anything, it's just the heating part on its own. Now, the concept of a frost thermostat is uh, pretty much as described when the temperature in the air or whatever gets down to freezing or near freezing then uh, the heating will turn on to avoid the system freezing and obviously pipes bursting and all of that, which of course is uh, something you definitely want to avoid. And you can do it as simply just having what's uh, sold as a frost thermostat, which just turns on generally around 5 degrees centigrade. However, the problem with that is that's actually sensing the air temperature, and if you have that alone, although it will turn on and uh, heat things up, it will actually keep the boiler on for a very long time until the air temperature has actually risen above 5 degrees and of course by then all the radiators are blazing hot and the temperature is going to continue rising so that can be fairly wasteful. So what we're going to look at here is a system where you have two thermostats. You have the frost thermostat which senses the air temperature and that turns on the heating or whatever when it gets down to around 5 degrees centigrade and then there's an additional thermostat which attaches to the pipe which is on the return to the boiler and then the concept here is that the thing will turn on when the air temperature gets around 5 degrees, but the boiler will only stay on until that return pipe gets above a moderate sort of temperature, say around 30 degrees centigrade or something. So all it's doing is just warming up the pipework in the system to prevent it freezing, but not enough so that obviously you're heating up the rooms to very high temperatures, because after all if you're going to heat up the rooms to normal temperatures you might just leave the heating turned on and just have it running anyway and using quite a lot of fuel. Now first of all we'll have a look at the situation with an S-plan system, and that's what we're showing here. This diagram has been shown in previous videos and explained in considerable detail, so we're not going to go into all of the uh, actual operation here. But if you haven't seen those other videos, then you'll find links to those in the description to this video, and also on the screen in various places depending on what and where you're watching it. Now the concept we've got here is it's two separate valves, one for the heating and one for the hot water, and the purpose of the frost thermostat is to switch on the heating independently of any of the other controls. So it doesn't matter what the program is set to, or the room thermostat, or anything else, it's going to turn it on no matter what. Now in order to do this, all we need to do is connect two things together in the wiring centre, shown in the middle of the diagram there, terminals numbered 1 to 10. And in this case it's connecting terminal 1 over the left there, which is the permanent line coming in, and we're going to connect that to number 5 near the middle there, and as you can see, that one goes to the brown wire for the heating valve. So if we connect those two together, the heating valve will have power, the valve will open, and then it will switch on the orange output there. Now the frost thermostat and things we're going to be demonstrating here are these two items at the top right there. So we've got the T4360A frost thermostat and an L641B pipe thermostat. Now both of these are made by Honeywell. They're fairly classic items that have been in use for probably decades, and they're certainly the most common options. But of course there are other frost thermostats available, and likewise there are other pipe thermostats available as well. Now the frost thermostat looks like this, this is a fairly typical example of it. And you'll note that there's no adjustment on the front, the adjustment is actually under the cover, so this is a set it and then leave it there forever kind of situation. And also notice from the description there that its temperature range is only from 3 to 20 degrees centigrade, and generally you're going to be setting this around, say, 5 degrees, as the whole idea is it only switches on when the temperature falls below a certain level, and that's, say, generally around 5 degrees, which of course will be the point at which frost and ice would start to form. So uh, just a mechanical thing, it just turns on and off, and essentially all it's doing is connecting two wires together when the temperature is below the setting that you've selected. Now the pipe thermostat, as the name suggests, attaches to a pipe, and the particular model we're looking at here is the L601B1004, and the important thing about this one is the temperature range, and you can see there, as it says there, setting is between 10 and 40 degrees centigrade, minimum setting is 2, and generally you're going to set this somewhere in the middle of that range, so probably around sort of 20 to 30 degrees. And the idea of this is that once the system is turned on to prevent frost, this particular thermostat will turn off the system once the pipe has reached the temperature of, say, 20 or 30 degrees. So you're not heating the system up to heat up the air particularly, you're just heating up so that the water in the pipes gets to a moderately warm temperature, obviously to avoid the frost. 
This is different from normal pipe thermostats, which typically go up to around 95 degrees, as see from the other models described there. That's not what you want because obviously you're going to then start heating up the house and you may as well have just left the heating on permanently. Now in terms of where you locate these devices, the frost thermostat is an air temperature sensing device. So you want to locate this in the building where it's likely to be coldest. So generally that's going to be downstairs in the property because of course heat rises, so naturally it's going to get colder downstairs first. And if you had the boiler or any pipe that is going into, say, an outside utility room or a garage or something like that, again, that would be where you want to put that thermostat, because that's going to get colder before the rest of the house. If it's all on one level, like a bungalow or something, again, it probably doesn't make a huge difference. But you don't want to be putting it in a part of the house that's going to stay warmer longest, because, of course, by the time that actually senses the temperature's falling, the rest of the pipes could all be frozen and burst. And the pipe thermostat, that needs to go on the pipe close to the boiler, and it needs to go on the return pipe for the heating. Now, if you don't know which one this is, then you can either just look in the instructions for the boiler, or the easy way is just to switch the boiler on, see which one of the pipes gets hot first. That's going to be the flow from the boiler, and then the other one is going to be the return. And the idea of that is that you want the heating to turn on and heat up all of the pipes, so you want to be sensing on the one that comes back to the boiler, because by the time that one has heated up, that means all of the other pipes in the building would have also been heated up as well. If you put it on the flow one, then it would have pretty much turn off as soon as the boiler switched on, because hot water would flow out, all the pipes heated up and that's it, and you'd only end up heating just a few feet of pipe. Of course, that wouldn't really achieve anything. So on the return pipe for the boiler, and the wall-mounted one goes wherever the cooler part of the house is going to be. So we go back to our diagram here, and we can see we've got the two items there. They are literally just switches connecting two terminals together, or not. The pipe thermostat does have three connections, but uh, we're not going to be using the third one of those. It is just going to be the two wires connected together, or not connected. Now the first thing we're going to have to do is connect these two thermostats together, and that's going to be the terminal 1 in the frost thermostat, and terminal C in the pipe thermostat. And these are actually going to be wired together in series. Now to do this, put two wires, one from each terminal, and we need to join together, so we're going to do that in the wiring centre, just going to use that spare terminal number 9 there. So that's just shown in pink there, just connecting the two things together. Now, as I said earlier, we need some connection to permanent line, so that's terminal 1 in the wiring centre. I'm going to take that from there to number 3 in the wall-mounted frost thermostat. So uh, when the temperature is normal or above freezing, power is just going to go to that, nothing happens. But of course, when that closes, it will then send voltage through to that terminal 9 there, and then out to the pipe thermostat. And then the final connection we need is another wire from the terminal 1 in the pipe thermostat, and that comes back to our number 5 in the wiring centre. Now the reason we've connected the two in terminal 9 is that you can then have two separate cables, one going to the frost thermostat and one going to the pipe thermostat. And in most applications, those two things are not going to be in the same place, so it's just convenient to have the two cables going out and you can just join the two there in the wiring centre with everything else. So let's have a look how this is going to work. Now the pink wires are the ones we're interested in here, and we're going to highlight those in a red colour, just to indicate what we're talking about at that particular time. So initially then, the permanent live from Terminal 1 going to the frost thermostat, that is basically live all the time, and that's regardless of whether the program is on or the other thermostats on or off. As long as power is supplied to the system, that's going to be actually powered. So in this configuration, nothing's going to happen because the air temperature is above the 5 degrees we've set. However, if the temperature should fall below 5 degrees, the frost thermostat contacts will close, as shown there. And then, of course, power will go through the frost thermostat onto terminal number 1, and then that will come back to the wiring centre on terminal 9. But of course, 9 is also connected to the other wire going out to the other pipe thermostat, so again, that becomes live as well. Now we're going to assume that the pipes are also cold, because obviously if the air temperature is at 5 degrees, then presumably the heating hasn't been on for quite some time. So you can see there it's connected through to C and 1. So again, power goes through there to number 1, and that comes back on the fourth wire there to terminal 5 in the wiring centre. And you can see there that's actually connected to the heating brown wire on the valve there. So again, that will become live as well. This will power the motor inside the valve, so the valve will now open. When the valve is open, a switch inside the valve turns on and will connect the incoming line to the orange outgoing wire. That goes to terminal 10, 
which also connects through to the boiler on the switch line there. So now the boiler turns on and of course the pump turns on as well as that's connected to and controlled by the boiler. So now the boiler is heating the water. That heated water is being circulated throughout the entire heating system and eventually it will get back to the boiler and the pipe thermostat which is located on that return pipe to the boiler eventually will heat up and when it does that will actually open and break the circuit. Now I show there that the pipe thermostat has opened. See the connection is actually going on to that unused number two terminal, but of course not connected to anything. So what happens then is that the power is removed from the terminal five in the wiring centre. The valve isn't powered anymore, so the spring closes it. The switch in the valve then opens, disconnects power from the boiler and the pump, and then of course that uh, switches off. So crucially, this only heats up until the pipe returning to the boiler has got to the set temperature of say 20 or 30 degrees. That's nowhere near enough to heat the building, but of course it is enough to remove any kind of frost damage or frost danger from the pipework and avoid it freezing. And of course it uses the absolute minimum of fuel to do that, far less than would be if you say wanted to heat up the air temperature to say 20 degrees, which would require the radiators to be running on for quite a considerable time. Now let's have a look at how it's done with a Y-plan system. So here we have the Y-plan wiring diagram. And again, this has been covered in other videos as well, so we won't be going into much detail there. Now in terms of the wiring for the two thermostats, it's basically exactly the same as we had previously. So we've got our two thermostats there, the frost one and the pipe thermostat. Put a link through to connect the two of those together. And again, we just use that spare terminal 9 in the wiring centre there. You could equally use 10 if you wanted, or pretty much any other spare terminal. Permanent line connects from terminal 1 there through to the frost thermostat. And then the uh, final wire from the pipe thermostat comes back to terminal 5 in the wiring centre. Now this is a y plan system, so it's slightly different. That actually connects to the white wire going to the three-port valve. White wire is one that selects heating only. And very similar to what we had with the uh, S-plan system, when that's uh, connected to power, the valve will open and the switch inside will activate power onto the orange wire that comes out. And just as we had before, that will then switch on the boiler and the pump, circulate water around, of course, until the pipes get up to the preset temperature. So in terms of operation, it's exactly the same. The only difference is you're connecting the actual output from the thermostat to the white wire on the valve, rather than the brown one to the heating valve. And just as before, this works completely independently of any of the other controls, so it doesn't matter what's uh, turned on or off or anything else, this will work no matter what. Now the final point then is what do you do when you have a combination boiler, because of course these don't have any valves externally, or usually don't have those. All you've got is the boiler itself. However, if you have a look inside most combination boilers, they do have a set of terminals specifically for frost thermostat connections, and we can see here a typical terminal example from a Worcester Bosch boiler, and over to the left there you've got FR and FS. Those are designed for a frost thermostat, and it's got that sort of snowflake symbol on that as well. And the deal with these, if nothing's connected to them, the boiler just operates as normal, turning on and off as the tap's turned on, and obviously any thermostats do control the heating. But if you connect those two terminals together, so FR and FS in this case, that will turn on the boiler regardless of any of the other controls. So even if the boiler is set to summer mode, which is basically hot water only, and all the outside controls are switched off, Connecting those together will still activate the boiler and circulate water through the heating pipes. So just as we had before, we can use those same thermostats, the uh, wall-mounted frost one and the pipe thermostat. Two wires from the end of those just go into the two terminals in the boiler. And then the only other slight difference is we've got here the two wires previously were joined together in the wiring centre. Now, of course, there is no wiring centre here, so... All we need to do is just to add our own terminal in the boiler, as we've got here, just to join those two together. And again, you could put that inside the boiler or put it separately outside. Generally, it's going to be easier to put it inside the boiler because you're going to be bringing those two cables in to the boiler anyhow. I say usually these two things are not located in the same place. Other than that, it works exactly the same as on the other systems. When the air temperature falls below a certain level, 5 degrees, and the pipes of the heating are also below the, say, 20 or 30 degrees set on the pipe thermostat. Those two terminals in the boiler get connected together. Boiler turns on, heats up the pipes. When the pipes have heated up to, say, 20 or 30 degrees, pipe thermostat opens, boiler turns off, and then we'll just sit there until the pipes have eventually cooled down to below the set point again. 
So that's how you attach a frost thermostat, or in the case of that, two thermostats to an existing heating system. And it's not necessarily used in all cases, but certainly if you've got a house where it's going to be left unattended for any length of time during the winter, it's certainly worthwhile putting that in because although it's obviously a cost involved, you only need the pipes to burst once and flood the place, and that's going to cost hundreds or even thousands of pounds in damage. So uh, certainly worth considering there. And again, if you're going to have a house you're of course going to live in permanently and the heating's going to be on all the time, again, not really much point in installing that. But of course, uh, plans and things can change, so certainly it may be worthwhile in some cases. And again, the important thing to note here is that just because your boiler has frost protection built in, as a lot of them do, Bearing in mind that's only for the boiler, and it only protects things at the boiler itself. So if your boiler was in the house, and it was relatively warm in there, say it was upstairs in a bedroom or something, of course that's not going to protect the downstairs, your house getting cold, pipes freezing, or ones that say went in an unheated garage or utility room or something like that. So yeah, the ones in the boilers obviously do work, but crucially they only sense the temperature in the boiler itself, so obviously if the boiler's in a warmer part than the rest of it, that may not be sufficient. So that's it for this video. Until next time, thanks for watching.